Wing Commander Trevor Keeler and Group Captain Shamsher Singh Pathania are one of the most celebrated fighter pilots of the Indian Air Force. On September 3rd and September 4th, 1965, during Pakistan's attack on the vital town of Akhnur, the action of 10th Squadron leader Trevor Keeler and Flight Lieutenant Pathania led to the Indian force establishing air superiority in the combat zone. Squadron leader Trevor Keeler led a section of Nat fighter jets to engage the Pakistan Air Force Sabre jets and destroyed a Sabre jet during this engagement. This was India's first air-to-air -air kill. Flight Lieutenant Pathania flew his Nat jet to engage the Pakistan Air Force Sabre jets and Star fighters and was successful in outmaneuvering them and eventually shooting down a Sabre. This video provides the details of the air wars during 1965 war of India and Pakistan and the role of the brave and ferocious fighter pilots Trevor Keeler and Virender Singh Pathania. It was September 1965. Pakistan launched a surprise attack towards the crucial town of Akhnur to try and cut off communication links between Jammu and Kashmir and the rest of India. The Indian Army positions in this sector were weak and were in no position to hold off the attack for too long. That is when the Indian Air Force swung into action with the objective of doing as much damage to the incoming attack as possible and stopping them from reaching Akhnur. The 1950s and 60s were a time when the Pakistan military had the support of the Western powers and hence had access to the most sophisticated war machines of the time. For the army, this included the famous Patton tanks and for their air force, this included the F-86 Sabres and the F-104 Star Fighters. Compared to this, the Indian Army had the obsolete Centurion tanks and the Indian Force had the Vampires. The Indian Air Force initially launched its obsolete Vampire jets to strike Pakistan positions in the Cham Jordia sector, moving rapidly towards Akhnur. The Pakistan Air Force engaged their much more sophisticated Sabres and Star Fighters. The Indian Air Force Vampires, being older fighter jets, suffered heavy losses in this engagement. The Indian Air Force then engaged their Mysteers and Nats to counter the Pakistan Sabres and Star Fighters. The Mysteers were to act as a bait so as to entice the enemy jets into the battle space. They were to fly at 300 knots and 1500 feet above ground level so as to replicate the signature of a vampire, presenting them as a juicy target for the enemy. Unknown to them, was the fact that the Indian Air Force Nats would be following the Mysteers under the enemy radar at 300 feet above ground level, so as to not get detected by the enemy. The enemy would enter the battle space and get behind the Mysteers. The Mysteers would run towards the hills and rapidly descend and leave the space. The enemy would find them being pursued by the Indian Air Force Nats. September 3rd, 1965. At 7 a.m., as planned, two mysterious took off Pathan Kot Air Base towards the Jonia sector to entice the enemy aircrafts. They were at 300 knots and 1500 feet above ground level so as to emulate a vampire jet. Two formations of four Nats each followed the mysterious, with section one of four Nats at 300 feet above ground level and section two of four Nats at 100 feet above ground level. As expected, the Mysteers were instantly detected by the enemy ground radar, while the Nats operating at lower heights were not. Indian 230 signal unit relayed information that four Sabres and two Star Fighters were scrambled by the enemy to engage the supposed two vampires in the sector. The first phase of the plan seemed to have worked. The enemy had been enticed into the battle space with the juicy target. After seeing the enemy jets in the battle space, the two mysterious instantly changed course, left the battle space and moved back to base. It was time for section 1 of the Nats to show themselves to the enemy and attack. The enemy was operating at heights of 15,000 to 20,000 feet above ground level while the Nats were operating at 300 feet and 100 feet respectively. This meant 
that for the Nats to attack the enemy jets, they had to ascend and get to the enemy's height. As soon as this happens, the enemy air radar would spot them and the element of surprise would be gone. So the ascent had to be rapid in order to give as little time as possible for the enemy to react. So both the sections of four Nats rapidly ascended at 400 knots to achieve a dominating position in the upcoming dogfight. One major threat that the Indian side faced was from the air-to-air missile capability that the F-104 starfighters possessed at the time. The Indian Nats did not possess these weapon systems and hence would be put in a significant disadvantage against a starfighter. So it was crucial for the Indian jets to position themselves in the battle in such a way that this threat was offset. The lead offensive four Nats led by Johnny Green commenced a tight climbing spiral as the enemy was reported at 1 o'clock some miles away. This was to force a high G fight at around 20,000 feet to make the missiles useless if used. A tight spiral would ensure around 4G or 5G turn and the missiles at the time could handle up to 2G turns. So in simple words, in case there was missile lock and fire from an enemy starfighter jet on an Indian NAT, it was surely to miss its target. This superb tactic ensured that the technical superiority of a starfighter was evened out against the Indian NAT. The Indian side had another ace up its sleeve. The second section of Nats, even though also did a rapid ascend, they positioned themselves 3000 feet below and 1500 yards behind section 1. This ensured that they would not appear in the enemy jet's airborne fire radar. So for the enemy, only four Nats were conducting a surprise attack. So in case during the battle the enemy was able to maneuver itself to a dominating position, the section 2 would quickly swing into action and attack. As expected, the first section of Nats was picked up by the enemy radar and section 2 was neglected. As a result, two sabers and one starfighter with missiles converged onto the lead Nat formations. It is important to note that the effective gun range of the Nats is around 400 yards. So any enemy jet that gets in that range would be in the kill zone of a Nat. Since the Section 2 was operating at around 1500 yards behind Section 1 in order to remain undetected by the enemy air radar, there was some wiggle room that the enemy could have had where they could have come between Section 1 and Section 2 of the Nats and not be attacked. So two Sabres and one Starfighter with missiles converged onto the lead Nat formations. For them to pursue the Nats, they had to hold their curves very well. The enemy jets held the curve well and positioned closer to the tail of Section 1 of the Nats. One Sabre jet, however, could not hold the curve of pursuit and fell right between the Section 1 and Section 2 of the Nats. The lead on the Section 2 of the Nats, squadron leader Trevor Keeler saw the opportunity, opened fire at the target and instantly shot it down. With this, squadron leader Trevor Keeler became the first pilot of the Indian Air Force to shoot down an enemy fighter jet. This was independent India's first air-to-air -air kill. It's also interesting to note that the Sabre did not have a wingman which gives credence to the overall plan that the enemy anticipated only vampires in the battle space and went after the juicy target without much preparation. Meanwhile, the remaining Sabre and Starfighter started targeting the wingman of Section 1 of the Nats, Flight Lieutenant Virender Singh Pathania. The Sabre was right behind him and the Starfighter behind on the top. This put Flight Lieutenant Patania's jet in significant danger and it was imperative for him to outmaneuver the two attackers. Patania quickly broke hard right and avoided being targeted by the enemy. He got behind the attackers and was in a dominating position ready to attack them. The enemy fighter jets quickly left the battle space back to their home base. By now, Flight Lieutenant Patania's jet was also running low on fuel, so instead of pursuing the enemy, 
he returned to the base in Pathan Court. The combat was done at the max range of the Nats, and the pilots had only 5 minutes of combat reserve for fuel. In this case, 5 minutes of combat had been used, one saber shot down and two enemy fighter jets forced to flee the battle. Since the jets moved in the battle space under the radar at a height of 100 feet above ground level, the fuel consumption of the aircrafts was significantly higher due to the higher drag from the atmosphere. With this incident, the enemy was made to realize that in spite of its supersonic aircrafts, air-to-air -air missiles and good radar cover, he was dealing with a formidable, determined and well-trained team of the Indian Air Force. The next day, September 4th, 1965, despite heroic efforts by the pilots of the Indian Air Force, the Pakistan Patent Tank columns were slowly yet surely moving ahead towards their target of Aknoor. A Pakistan tank column was able to cross the Munawar Tavi River in the Chamb Jorya sector. This meant they would be able to push eastwards towards Aknoor with more ease. The enemy push was continuously being supported with even more vigorous close air-to-air -air patrol by the enemy. The Indian Air Force decided to launch another operation in the Chump Jorya sector to counter the new developments on the battlefront. It was decided to send a strike force of four Mysteers escorted by Nats and MiG-21s to engage the targets in Chump. Despite bad weather, four Mysteers got airborne to engage their targets. They were escorted by two Nats. Further air cover was provided by six Nats who were orbiting the Jammu area while four Hunters and two MiG-21s covered the airfield. The Mysteers were able to get close to the enemy targets without any counter-attacks from the Pakistan Air Force. The Mysteers started pounding enemy targets in the region, taking out multiple tanks and other vehicles. In another attack, Flight Lieutenant Trilochan Tango Singh was about to take out a tank but stopped at the last second. He saw a set of tents in the corner and thought this may be a headquarter of the lead offensive. He circled around and targeted those tents and blasted them to obliteration. Soon after that, the Indian intelligence unit intercepted a Pakistan message confirming the death of a Pakistan Major General. Soon after this loss, the Pakistan Air Force increased their presence in the Cham Jorya region. They engaged two Sabres and two F-104 Starfighters to provide close air patrol to the attacking Pakistan tank unit. This was to try and block the Indian Air Force from achieving air superiority in the region. So to counter this move of the enemy, the Indian Air Force planned another attack at the enemy targets with four Mysteers and four Nats as escorts. The Nats were led by squadron leader Trevor Keeler along with squadron leader JW Johnny Green, squadron leader M Murdeshwar, Flight Lieutenant V.S. Patania. Upon entering the battle space, they saw enemy aircrafts attacking Indian Army positions on the Chum Jorya line. Squadron leader Trevor Keeler selected to stay with the Mysteers to protect them and asked Green to engage the Sabres. Squadron leader Green along with squadron leader Murdeshwar and Flight Lieutenant Patania moved ahead to engage the enemy Sabres. Green was able to get behind the first Sabre, but had a high angle off, so was unable to target the Sabre. Squadron leader Murdeshwar was able to get behind another Sabre and was 400 yards behind it. The Sabre was in the gun range and ready to be shot down. Murdeshwar fired, but his gun jammed after its first round of fire. Flight Lieutenant Patania was also in the combat zone and outmaneuvered a saber and got right on its tail. He then saw an opportunity and fired at the saber and shot it down. During the aggressive engagement of the Indian Air Force, Nats with the Pakistan Air Force sabers, another saber lost its bearing and crashed into the ground during combat. So on September 4th, 1965, Indian Nats scored a decisive victory over Pakistan sabers during this engagement. 
Subsequent analysis of the cine films taken by the pilots during the engagement found that the two more enemy jets could have been shot down if the Nats' guns had not jammed. Later in the day of September 4th, squadron leader Trevor Keeler led another four aircraft Nat formations to Chumb, escorting the Mysteers. The presence of the Nats provided the Mysteers the freedom to attack Pakistan army positions and formations in the region. They took out multiple tanks there and did some real damage to Pakistan military. Pakistan Air Force's sabers, after suffering the losses earlier in the day, kept away from the Nats. In the next few days, it became clear that the Indian military will have to open the Lahore front to force the Pakistan side to come on the defensive. September 6th, this front was opened. Pakistan was forced to abort its mission of capturing Aknur. The Indian Air Force played a significant role in thwarting the enemy's efforts on capturing the vital Indian town and gain a dominating position in the war. It also proved its tactical superiority over Pakistan Air Force's latest and greatest aircrafts. For his role in the air wars in 1965, Flight Lieutenant Virinder Singh Pathania was awarded the Veer Chakra. His citation read as follows. September 4th, 1965, Veer Chakra. Flight Lieutenant Virinder Singh Pathania was one of the NAT pilots who were sent to Pathan court to establish Indian Air Force air superiority in that region during the recent operations against Pakistan. He flew repeated missions seeking out Pakistani aircraft and engaging them. On September 4, 1965, during one such mission, he came up against a formation of enemy Sabre jets and immediately engaged them in battle. With great confidence and courage, he outmaneuvered the enemy all the time got behind one of the enemy sabers and shot it down. In this encounter, Flight Lieutenant Virinder Singh Pathania displayed cool courage and firm determination in the best traditions of the Indian Air Force. And for his role in the Air Force in 1965, squadron leader Trevor Keeler was also awarded the Veer Chakra. His citation read as follows. On September 3rd, 1965, upon receiving a report that a formation of Pakistani fighters were circling over our army positions in the Chump sector of Jammu and Kashmir, a formation of NAT aircraft was ordered to intercept the intruders. Approaching the area, squadron leader Trevor Keeler, who was a section leader in the NAT formation, sighted enemy F-86 Sabre jets and engaged them in air battle. When the combat was in progress, F-104 starfighters of the Pakistan Air Force also joined in. Unmindful of the numerical superiority of the enemy, squadron leader Keeler chased a Sabre jet and pressed home his attack until the enemy aircraft caught fire and disintegrated in the air. This was the first victory of our Air Force in the air battles against Pakistan Air Force. In this operation, squadron leader displayed courage and leadership of a high order in the best traditions of the Air Force. The lessons and tactics learned during this war were mastered and implemented in 1971, India-Pakistan War, where the Air Force achieved air superiority right in the initial stages of the war. Dedicated to the brave pilots of the Indian Air Force.